They create compounds with amazing properties by applying existing knowledge in unconventional ways. This is the challenge that motivates the researchers who work with chemist professor Wolfgang Schnick. If you want to work on something entirely novel, there are two ways to go about it. You can make a plan or a map that ought to get you where you would like to go, or you can roam around in that area. We set up conditions that haven't occurred to others. We achieved revolutionary breakthroughs by exploring untried combinations of parameters. One such breakthrough emerged from work on a nitridosilicate compound containing strontium. In 1997, one of Schnick's PhD students decided to replace some of the strontium with europium, a rare earth metal. The result was an orange-colored powder. This is a sample of the material that gave us a surprise when we opened the little tungsten crucible at the end of the reaction. We were immediately intrigued by its intense color and at first thought that it might be an interesting pigment, simply a colored substance that could be used as a dye or in a paint. But this substance had more to offer. On exposure to blue light, it emitted an intense orange-red glow. Schnick's team went on to coat blue LEDs with their orange pigment and a second yellow-greenish powder. Unlike the former cold LED light, these diodes emit a pleasant, warm white light. In other words, we soon confirmed that we had something of a world champion on our hands. A material that allowed us to convert blue into warm white light with unparalleled efficiency. Up to 95% of the energy that goes into lighting devices around the world is lost as heat. That represents roughly 20% of global energy consumption. Hence, modern energy-saving sources which produce white light that people are comfortable with are a vital component of any energy strategy. Energy-efficient LEDs are the key and they can be further improved. The next objective set by the industry was to find a luminescent material that emits in a specific, very narrow bandwidth, which would almost perfectly fit to the red end of the eye sensitivity curve. The closer the correspondence between the emission spectrum and the eye's sensitivity curve, the less energy is wasted as heat. Here too, Professor Schnick succeeds in meeting the challenge, this time with a new class of compounds, the nitrido aluminates. Again, the secret lies in replacing some strontium with a pinch of europium. This is the latest product of our work, an extremely narrowband red emitter. We have here a compound which brings significant improvements in the color rendition of LEDs and further reduces their energy consumption by up to 30%. We're now very close to the quality of sunlight. This success was possible only because Professor Schnick and his team had complete freedom in their research. The most fascinating aspect of this project for us was that it began as purely fundamental research, without a defined target. The fact that by chance a practical application emerged was an unexpected bonus. We are able to contribute to better lighting and the reduction of energy consumption. And of course, it is profoundly satisfying when some practical application comes out of what started off as undirected basic research.